What's up, everybody? Welcome to On Tap. I'm Kevin, I'm your host, and uh, I'm glad you joined me for just enough, but not too much of the good stuff. And uh, hey, when you're done with this video, you can go back and watch that uh, Guy Fieri guy you love. You know him. And that's what this dish is called. It's actually called the Jackass Roll. Yeah, yeah, I know you like that guy. Hey, look, uh, before we get started, big shout out to Pastor Tim for hanging with us the last few weeks. I gotta love his perspective, his wisdom, and his pick for a Bible character that he would have drinks with. He wanted Moses on a back deck with Queen's Bohemian Rhapsody playing in the background, which I think is epic, and I totally would wanna join him. However, I did do some thinking about this, and I'm thinking I'm gonna do, uh, I'm gonna have whiskey, I have a whiskey, right? Nice little sipper with Jonah over, I think a nice meal of some braised whale. How's that sound? Give the what up to that whale for eating them and spitting them out. We can get Guy Fieri to, <laughs> Guy Fieri will make some braised whale for us, it'll be perfect. I had enough bulgur and steamed fish to kill a kid. <sighs> All right, enough Guy Fieri talk, uh, that's getting old. Um, so look, I've noticed something recently, and this is a major revelation, I just feel like I need to share with you. I'm terrible at texting. I don't know if you like to text, do you? I, I can't hear you, maybe you can text me. I, I don't like texting. Um, I like the convenience of it, but I'm a super, 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 super sloppy texter. Like I, I can kind of spell okay in real life and in text world, I'm terrible at it. And, and I, you probably noticed there's certain kinds of people who are like the really clean, grammatically correct kind of people. Like my mother-in-law, everything is like a very well thought out constructed sentence. To me, it's barely an assembly of letters and maybe some numbers and an exclamation point to get my point across. And it's gotten me in trouble over the years because I have texted and almost texted multiple people, bizarre, gross, profane, inappropriate, weird things by not checking the message before I send it. I'm getting, getting all my thoughts out there, send it, send it, send it, and go. And I look back and I'm like, oh my gosh, what have I said, what have I done? And that, that part's easy to fix because you can just go, hey, I, I, I didn't mean to send that or, or I meant this, not that. But what kills me, what kills me about texting, and I feel like Peter Griffin here, like, I'll tell you what grinds my gears. You know what really grinds my gears? Is autocorrect. I can't stand autocorrect. I know it's a handy feature, and it's like a 60% of the time it works every time thing, Anchorman, but no, no, I do not like autocorrect. Because here's what happens. I write something like super normal. Like for instance, I, I'll use the word new, and for some reason, autocorrect thinks that I wanna say the word me or nay with like a little accent, like I'm French now. No, I'm not French. I just wanna write the word new. Why do you think new is nay? And if I took every suggestion that autocorrect gave me, my texts would make even less sense than they do right now. And it frustrates me because I'm starting to write something and then it goes, did you mean, you know, you mean this? And it fills in the word. No, I didn't mean that. I don't like people autocorrecting for me. Your phone's autocorrecting for me. And I guess here's the problem. Autocorrect reminds me of this what I said and what I meant thing that happens in real life but in text form. So, for instance, when I'm talking to my wife in person or on the phone, there have been a lot of times and for those of you who are married or dating or whatever, you know this, you're talking to this person that you care for and love, trying to say the right thing, and then you find out later that you said the wrong thing. And I'm thinking it's good, and then later I found out it's not good, it's bad, and we need to have more talking. And oftentimes for me, it's not that I'm like outwardly a jerk, but that sometimes my words and my tone just read that way. And it kills me because I feel like I didn't even mean to say that. And in text form, you can go back and just go, hey, uh, that, that's not what it was, or it's this, or oops. But in real life, when it's conversations and you're trying to work back your way from being auto-corrected or auto-interpreted, it can really be a drain. And I see that so much in daily life where there's a lot of people going around auto-correcting each other. They, they hear the words that someone says, they know that, they, they, they kind of think that they know their intent, but then because of their perspective or their opinion on the topic, they auto-correct it and go, you said this, but I really think you meant that. And that's where it starts to get kind of intense because I'm sure you have been on the receiving end of somebody saying to you, yeah, I know you said that, 
but this is what it felt like, or this is what it sounded like. And you have to go back and go, oh, okay, well, either I take your feedback and humility, or I tell you to, you know, bug off and you don't care. And that, that tension between what we say, what we communicate, and, and it being received is the source of a lot of the headache, in, at least in my life and maybe in yours too. So how do we overcome that? I mean, I, I don't, how do we get over that? And I've been thinking about a lot of this lately. You know, so much of autocorrect, whether it's in text form or it's in people form, is wrapped up in this idea of an assumption. You remember the old Fresh Prince episode where the coach is talking to the players and, and he's telling them about baseball. And he goes, you know, make sure you communicate. You know, the old like ball guy. Can we get a picture of him? Yeah, this guy. This guy, he's like, you know, now you don't want to assume because that's an assumption. You'll be an ass and the ump will shun you. Uh, assumption, right? I love that. That was so funny to me as a kid, but it's so true. I suppose if you assume you'll be an ass and the ump will shun you. But what sounds kind of funny ends up being really hurtful in real life. It ends up being really hurtful when I read between the lines or I read intent into your words and I don't clear it up with you. I mean, have you liked being autocorrected by other people? Assumed and inferred about based on something you didn't even mean? Probably not. And yet we do it to other people all the time because it's convenient, it's fast. The phone autocorrects because it's trying to help us get to what we wanna say. But when we autocorrect for other people, we're not helping them get to what they wanna say, we're helping us get to the conclusion we wanna make. And that doesn't help build understanding at all. That just helps us dig our heels further into the dirt of our opinions. So I guess I just wanna challenge us this week that, <laughs> I'm not gonna give you the Fresh Prince assumption one, but, but I'm gonna give you this ass, <laughs> I guess, I guess what I'm gonna say and for the wrap up, what I'm gonna say is uh, for our 12 ounce, is that when, I, when we assume, when we autocorrect, when we assume, we not only make an ass out of me, but we make an ass out of you too. So as you go about your week, fight all you want with the phone on autocorrecting or just turn the feature off, I could probably do that. And maybe turn that feature off a little bit in yourself your desire to assume, to autocorrect on other people. And just take that extra step, that extra minute to go, hey, it, is that what you meant? It sounded like this, did you mean that? And I think we might be surprised what might come out of it. So there you go, assume. Don't assume, because it'll make an ass of you and me. And we are better than that, right? Gosh darn it, we're better than that. So hey, have a great week. See you guys next time.